Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a showcase on Kate Bishop, the newest champion to be added. I'm part of the CCP, the content creator program. That's how I have access to this champion. It's going to be a showcase on her, but I'll also be scheduling a stream to go through her in more detail. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can stop by, ask any questions you have, see any particular content. I'm going to showcase a few different things that I like about her here. Tell you about her damage, tell you about her utility any rotations you need, why you might like her, why you might not, and just showcase some things that I think are cool. So personally, I think Kate is an incredible champion. I think she is probably my favorite one out of this year. I absolutely can't wait to get her. I think she's incredible. The designer DLL has done an incredible job with her. Uh, she could do so much. She has damage, great utility, and she's just a ton of fun to play. So why i think you should like her she got very versatile damage um, very few champions are immune to cold snap and of those who are you're not likely to take it, her against them like iceman or warlock people like that her main damage is from those cold snaps so if you can cold snap them you're gonna have a pretty good time her damage is also passive so what i mean by that is that the cold snaps themselves are passive so you can't really go up against an Agent Venom and worry that you're not going to get your damage out or any other Tenacity Champs, any Shrug Off, anything like that. So her damage is pretty accessible, pretty versatile and will work in a lot of places. She also has a kind of a choose your rotation. So there's applicable rotations for many different lengths of fights so if you're going for bgs or battleground help health pools then you've got one rotation then you can edit that if you want to go for a medium fight or a long fight like realm of legends or a super long fight like abyss she has a rotation that'll get you good times for each of those sorts of fights she's not someone like say stealth spider-man who's really good in battlegrounds but not very good in abyss style content because he takes it too long and she's also not someone like Proxima Midnight who has a really long ramp up, but isn't too good in shorter fights. Kate also has a really, really good amount of utility for a champion with as much damage as she has. She has an evade counter through her cold snap. She has a debuff counter through her tranquilize, which reduces the chance of debuffs triggering on you. And it's got a pretty, pretty fast ramp up, to be honest. She's got an AI manipulation with a 60% increase in the opponent's likelihood to throw a special when they're in the corner and they're going to be in the corner a lot if you're playing a right she can also manipulate where she is in the arena itself if you're getting backed up or you need to push them into the corner if you hold your heavy for long enough it pushes them back further than usual she has easy openings with her evade on parry it means that you can get around unblockable attacks and then she can also remove crit resistance with her sunder passive which is on one of her trick arrows we'll go through all of that later as for a short word on why you may not like her because i mean i'm, I'm gonna emphasize this kate will not be for everyone she is she's got a, quite a hard to play play style um there's a lot of timers to work around with all of her debuffs um, you also need to figure out your perfect release when you're throwing your specials there's just a lot going on and because of that if you're someone who just likes to plug and play and kind of just mash around with champions and do a ton of damage she may not be for you but if you enjoy pushing yourself and really figuring out the ideal play styles for champions then she really will be now for the last thing before we actually get into the gameplay is a question that i'm sure will be asked a lot does she need her signature ability and my unhelpful answer is no and yes i think she's still really really good unduped um, she can do pretty much everything that she can do duped while she's unduped. Um, but the SIG gives her mainly more damage because you get more potency on all of your trick arrows. But with that, you actually get more potency on some of the utility that you have, like your Tranquilize. Additionally, you also get a higher cap to your dialed in passives, which just further unlocks more damage and a bit more utility. So overall, yes, I think she would do very well to be sigged and duped, but you're still going to have a good time with her, even if she isn't. I'd say if you're going to use her in BGs, you probably want a high sig. 
um, and if you're going to use her in war, you're going to want her to be high sig, but but for questing, I think she'd be absolutely fine unduped. So for the gameplay, we'll start off with Wind Soldier here. As usual, he is our punching bag, and it's just a nice way to gauge her damage and explain the rotation a little bit. So I'll start off leaving it paused um, because there's a lot going on in the fights and I want to give you the rough idea of what's going on first. So to start off with, I'll just explain Kate's four trick arrows here. She has a cold snap, she has a tranquilize, a caltrops and a fragility. They all inflict what they say on the tin, but they have additional effects that we can get to a little bit later. By default, she cycles through in that order after throwing a special, so if you're on the cold snap to begin with, she throws a special, then she's on tranquilize, then caltrops, then fragility. You can disable that by activating one of these pre-fights, um, and that makes it stay on whichever one that you've activated, but you can still cycle through by tapping block twice. That means that it will jump onto the next one in that order, and that works whether you've activated the pre-fight or not. The main idea of Kate is to stack up all of these trick arrow effects and stack on your damage or utility or whatever you're looking for in that particular fight. In generic ones like this, I tend to go for my damage first, um, and in a health pool like Wind Soldier, which is about 500k, I tend to go for two fragilities and then two cold snaps. Each of the arrows has a max stack of two, that's why I kind of go for go for the max of one, then then over to the other. All of Kate's trick arrows have an extra effect if you get a perfect release. And a perfect release is when you hold block after throwing your special, time will slow down, and then if you release the arrow when there's a little glint on it, it means that you've got a perfect release. We'll go into that a little bit more later. But if you get a perfect release with the cold snap arrow, you then inflict a critical cold snap instead. That really, really increases the damage. The tranquilizer gets an extra 25% potency on top of its 40% potency. The caltrop does double damage when the opponent charges their heavy attack. Usually it just does some damage when they dash back or forward, and that is bleed damage, by the way. And then the fragility, if you do a perfect release, you also inflict a Sunder passive, which removes their critical resistance. So when you're up against Doom or Rintra, you, you'll find yourself critting a lot more than usual. So Kate's whole playstyle is about stacking up all of these trick arrows and then refreshing them or pausing them. So you refresh them by knocking them down with a heavy while they're in the corner, and you pause them by hitting them when they're recovering from a heavy attack or a special attack. I think that pauses it for five seconds. You can also pause it for two seconds based on SIG level by hitting into their block. And as I said, that is just when she's awakened. The last thing to note before jumping into this fight is that when you knock them down with a heavy in the corner, you also inflict a crushed passive. And that is the passive form of a unblockable effect on yourself. Uh, this is on the opponent and it means that you will be able to hit them through block and one thing I like to do is throw a heavy knock them down refresh my effects and then throw another special while you're unblockable and with that said let's jump into the fight so I'm going to try and explain my rotation and why I'm doing what I'm doing but there is a lot going on so bear with me I'm going to be starting off with my fragility arrow that means that i can stack on two of them increase my critical damage rating and then when i go for the two cold snaps it means that they'll do more damage because they're based on critical damage rating so i've pushed him back into the corner and that means that he's more likely to use specials which helps with the tempo of the fight and then i'm going to get my perfect release on here get my fragility up bait out specials notice that they're pause whenever i hit him when he's recovering from a special or heavy or if I do hit him into block, I can pause it that way as well. Perfect release, just watch for that little glint of the arrow. It's something that will come a bit more naturally while you're, while you're using it yourself. Um, I don't know if you noticed there, but I double tap block just to get myself onto my next arrow. And if they're crushed, you can throw your special after knocking them down with the heavy in the corner because you are unblockable. So now that I have my two fragilities up, I've gone for the cold snap, uh, started doing some, some really nice damage. 
Uh, it's about just under 3,000 per tick. And this is an unboosted, no synergies, rank 4. And now that both of them are up, you're going to see the real damage start to come. One thing I like to do is when I evade with the parry, it's quite a long evade, so you have time to double tap block and then go in. It's a really nice way to cycle through your arrows. Um, because I've got my two cold snaps up now, I'm just going to go for a little bit more damage with Caltrops if he dashes forward or back or throws a heavy. And this should pretty much close out the fight. Move on now to a Battlegrounds level health pool. This is just in 200,000, which is a pretty stacked rank 4. And I'm just going to go straight into my rotation. It's very simple. It's just get both cold snaps up. You don't really need to go for fragility in this in this level of health pool. It's just go straight for the critical cold snaps and you'll be fine. So again, I'll charge my heavy for longer than usual just to push them back into the corner. And once there, they are more likely to use specials and it just helps keep the fight under control. So again, looking for that little glint of the arrow just before releasing it. The AIA is more likely to throw specials when you've knocked them down anyway, so that extra 60% just, I'm not going to say guaranteed, but it's very likely that they will throw it. And already two specials used and he is just halfway down and ticking out. So that was a Battlegrounds level health pool and it was a 43 second fight which is going to win you a hell of a lot. So next up just a quick utility showcase on her evade counter. This is a Axe 6 path and I'm using a 5 star Kate at the moment. The nodes here are Spry, Ghast and Mixmaxter, which means that if they ever evade you get a little fatigue on you and that does a lot of damage every time you hit them. Kate works really well for evade because you can get the cold snap on very early in the fight. I guess the only thing to worry about really is if they're stun immune it can be harder to get there but once it's up it's up and say you're doing something in war, power start one, right away you've got an evade counter. So I'll let this fight play out and you can see how well she uh, she counters Mixed Master. So next up, I just want to showcase a bit of her utility with controlling debuffs. Tranquilize is a great effect. It is to debuffs what neutralize is to buffs. So it reduces the ability accuracy of debuffs that are applied to you. That has pros and cons. I mean, a con is it won't work against force of will or other stuff like that. Immune to ability accuracy reduction champions. However, one pretty big pro is that it doesn't actually count as a cleanse or a shrug off or anything like that and it means you can use it against people like havoc so i'm just going to showcase here how fast you can get up a 100 percent reduction to debuffs so what i'm going to be doing is just getting him towards the corner i because this is a, a practice, I, I can't activate the Tranquilize itself from the pre-fight, so I have to cycle back towards Tranquilize afterwards, so you'll see me double tapping every so often. I'm also uh, tapping into his block, hitting him when he recovers from heavies and stuff like that, just to uh, make sure that I'm keeping my team of pause. And already, two specials in, three debuffs on me. He will not put another debuff on me in this entire match. I do just man just about manage to uh, refresh my debuffs there, but uh, in general they're quite easy to keep up. You've got three ways of keeping them on the opponent. Uh, you can obviously 
refresh them or pause them in, in two different ways. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just showcasing here that you can bait out as many SP1s as you want from Havoc and it's, it's just not going to apply any of his, uh, any more of his plasmas to you. I can even uh, put a cold zap on him, which is energy damage, and if you can see them ticking up, his uh, plasma charges are just going crazy, but because they can't apply any debuffs to me, everything's fine. It makes Kate a pretty decent option for chugging debuffs. Um, and I'm sure I'll get the question of whether she's good for hazard shift. She's all right for hazard shift, um, I know that's quite a big thing in war. She's she can handle it with a bit of RNG, but I mean, with the kingpins and the Jabaris of the world, I just don't think Kate's often going to be the, the best option. She will be a option for sure, but I don't think she'll be, you know, ever anyone's go-to. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to showcase how, how well she can handle some debuffs here, and then I got hit there. Next up is a bit of a silly fight. I mean, th this isn't an ideal one at all. I wouldn't expect anyone to go out and be like, yeah, I'm going to use Kate Bishop for Mr. Sinister. But I just wanted to kind of set myself the challenge of seeing if I could do it. And you can see on my team I have Heimdall and Angela, that gives me a Fury buff which allows me to do any damage to Mr. Sinister. Um, I'm going to be using the 5 star Kate here, I brought them both just to see if I could do it with the 5 star first. So this is a kind of, I wanted to see if it was possible match and I wanted to see if I could get both of my tranquilizers up in time to stop any of the poison debuffs coming through from Caustic Temper. So my strategy here is I want to hit Mr. Sinister as few times as possible until I can get two bars of power. Kate's SP2, which I haven't mentioned just yet, it applies two of the current trick arrow. So if I get to an SP2, I can throw it, get a perfect bonus, and then apply both of my tranquilizers, which gives me over 100% chance for the debuffs to not apply. And that means I should be able to take it. The only problem is getting to those two bars of power. So my strategy in this fight is to take hits on block and build up to two bars of power. And then once I've thrown my SP2, I'm going to showcase how well you can pause her debuffs. Because obviously I'm going to be in my corner and I'm just going to be tapping his block, hitting him when he recovers from heavies just to try and pause the debuffs enough for me to get him back into his corner and then I can refresh the debuffs. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go into the fight now. So like I said, I'm going to start off by just taking hits on the block. That'll uh, get me enough power to an SP2. It'll also take away a fair bit of my health. Just going to be baiting heavies in the corner, dexing them when he throws them trying to take as many hits on block as possible. I'm sure you can imagine a lot of these fights ended with me eating heavies. And I've got that fury from the, the Heimdall synergy that'll let me do the damage. The reason I'm not going for two SP1s is because each of them have, you know, three hits that could trigger Caustic Temper and put poison on me. Uh, so that's a... Uh, six hit total. Also, if I throw one, then the tranquilize starts to run out. It's better to just go to SP2 here so that I don't have to worry about it running out or getting poisons on myself. I was trying to see if he kind of dashed back here and let me hit him on block because I did have a run where I almost managed to push him back into the corner before even throwing my SP2, but he wasn't going for it. So in the end, I just decided to go for the SP2. So with a perfect release, it applies an extra trick arrow and that stun, I'm going to hit him twice here because I want to hit him on block or beta special. That means I can start pausing those tranquilizers. See, see they're not running out while I'm hitting him on block. Then if I hit him while he's recovering from a special or a heavy, it also pauses it. 
And finally, we got him back in the corner. He catches me with a couple of hits, which isn't very nice. But we are in control of this fight now. I've got him towards the corner. I can now heavy him. He's been knocked into the wall, which means that I can refresh my debuffs. I switch from Tranquilize to Caldrops here just to get more Trick Arrows up. With each dialed in passive, it means I can increase the potency of future Trick Arrows. So while I'm cycling back from Tranquilize to Fragility, I can get a, a more potent version of it. And with the Fragility up, I feel it's a good time to now go for my Cold Snaps. So when I get an opportunity, I'm going to refresh my debuffs and I'm going to cycle through to the next trick arrow. Mr. Sinister has a very long recovery time on his SP1, so it's just enough time to double tap block as you're about to see me do. It means I can get a nice window to cycle through my arrows. And now that we've got a bit of a ramp up going, I'm ready to use my cold snap and even a five star. I mean, this is boosted, but class disadvantage, three and a half thousand per tick. It's not too bad. And uh, one more cold snap is just gonna absolutely nuke this last bit of Sinister down. So just a quick unrealistic showcase of what Kate can do. In other situations where debuffs are being put on you a fair bit, she can really, really shut it down. So for the last fight of this showcase, I decided to take her into Abyss because she has as I said before, such versatility in the types of rotations you can do. You can do BG level health pools with two cold snaps and you can do Abyss with what I'm about to describe. So I'll just let the fight play and I'll describe what I'm doing. So because her dialed in passives with the SIG add potency to your trick error effects, it means that if I save cold snap till the very, very end, they will have an insane amount of potency. Another trick error that I haven't mentioned is actually on the SP3. You can get a cruelty and a precision passive, and the cruelty is the main one to notice. Because you've got all that extra potency, there's more potency on this cruelty, and when you add the fragilities, it means that you have some serious crit damage. Add all of that together, and by the end, you have just a metric ton of cold snap damage. Kate does really well in Abyss in general. I've got Thing solos, I've got a Abyss Gladiator Hulk solo, and if you haven't already, go and look at Metal Sonic Dude's channel and see what he's managed to do with her. But I wanted to include this one because it was the first one I'd done and I was quite happy with it. So I started off with the Tranquilize because I wanted a debuff on Invisible Woman. That means that her power things expiring can't stun me. And it's also reducing the exhaustions that are put on me. And going through the, uh, the rotation that I mentioned before, we'll get there in the end and you'll see just how much damage it does. And uh, I guess one thing just to call out quickly is keep an eye out for how quickly Invisible Woman's force field goes down. It's just so satisfying so i'll let you watch this fight and i'll catch you at the end for a little sum up Let's <laughs> go. 
So just to round up this video, um, overall, I think you can tell I just really like Kate. She is so much fun. I honestly haven't enjoyed a champion as much as Kate since Titania. And uh, I think if you've, uh, if you've been a fan of my channel or if you've seen pretty much any video that I've made, you will know that I'm a big fan of Valkyrie and Titania and Kate has pretty much slotted right in with those two as my favorite champions. And uh, even though Valk and Kate are both skill, they uh, they really just cover different ground, and I think they complement each other really well. Um, you've got Valk taking care of unstoppable and stuns. She's got a purifying mechanic, and you've got that slow play through block. Uh, but you, you you know you can play her normally um, as well if you need to. And then you've got Kate with an evade and a miss counter. She's got a a non purify way of dealing with debuffs. And then her playstyle is just frantic, fun, just a hell of a lot going on. And uh, overall, I think she's a, a great addition to, to anyone's roster if you can dedicate some time to learning her. With that said, I'm going to close this one out. Again, just a reminder to uh, keep an eye out on my channel. I'm going to do some new champion streams. I'm going to do some testing and stop by and, and come see those. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.